Hello everyone, welcome to the first video of this video series um, and also full disclaimer that English is my third language so I'm probably gonna make some errors that I shouldn't be making. Um, so let's get into it. So this, this video uh, and the following videos which is gonna be the whole video series about Google Search Console data. So we are trying to learn how to use Google Search Console data um, using Google Search Console API with the help of Python. Um, and this is important because I spent a couple of years, I would say a few months, um, figuring out how to get this data. I started with um, Google Sheets uh, extension, I think search for analytics. Then I started using um, Google Search Console connecting with the Data Studio. Um, and then I ran into some limitations. So I started ex exploring how to use Google Search Console API with Python. Um, and I think, I don't think everyone should spend this much of time that I spent. So. With this video series, I'm trying to um, give all of those things that I have learned over the years and I'm trying to le lesser your time in a sense uh, to, to access the Google Search Console data with API. So let's get into it. Uh, so why the need, right? Like I'm, I'm a big fan of Google Search Console data to be honest. And I think um, learning more about Google Search Console has helped me overall in my career, uh, whether it comes to reporting or extracting insights or building right visualizations, right? Um, and I think if we all know how to access GSC data using API, then better things will come overall uh, for for the entire SEO community, right? Uh, some of you can learn this and try to come up with a script, and I think we can all of use that, all of those scripts. So going forward, I will start with the basics, but then I will also keep sharing some of the scripts that I have written over the um, last few months or a couple of years. Um, but I think there is a clear need uh, to understand how to access this data. Um, and also, don't don't get me wrong. Like all of this information is available um, somewhere on the on the internet. Like there are YouTube videos. Uh, there are folks who are doing great job at explaining it. But I thought that I will make it coherent. That you will you will just need to learn enough of Python to do the things that you want to do. Uh, you don't have to start a Udemy course um, or uh, Coursera course to learn Python and, and do all of those things. So that's what I'm trying to solve for. Um, first thing I think I would like to highlight is there are folks uh, like JC, uh, Charlie is there, I think Greg uh, Leafoot. I learned a lot. Marco has already like written us uh, a book right now. I bought it. I haven't read it yet. Uh, and I have learned from all of those folks. Noah and Robin. Robin is a, I think, OG of Google Search Console. When I used to work at uh, eBay classifieds, I think they did some fantastic job with uh, Google Search Console. Uh, Alton is also doing Google Search Console in BigQuery and uh, some amazing amazing um, Gumroad books are there. Uh, so I want to give, sh give shout out to all of those folks. If Google Search Console and Python interests you, then these are your folks to follow on LinkedIn or, or, or Twitter. Or, and I think you should follow their work as well. I have learned tremendously from these folks and they keep producing great content overall. Um, other than that, to, to learn Python, I have um, used Tech with Tim and uh, Corey Sheffer, I think that's the right pronunciation, their YouTube channel a lot. And I think I have learned a lot from them, so you should um, check them out as well. Okay, so this guide is, this video is going to be helpful for you if you are a beginner with Google Search Console API. Let's say you have a sense that there is a lot of data in there, but you don't exactly know how to extract it. Or you started exploring using that data, but then you faced limitation with let's say Google Search Console UI or using it with Sheets or using it with uh, Data Studio. Um, or let's say you just want access to the larger data, which is more than 25,000 rows. Um, and or, you know, you have access to the data, but then you need better tools to build visualizations on the top of it. So Python and Plotly uh, or using Pandas will allow you to do more with your Google Search Console data. So I think it can be really useful if you are looking for all of it. I'm going to try to attempt to explain the needed Python code. So I am a big believer of the fact that we should just find a problem and work it in reverse. So I didn't start out learning Python, so to speak. Um, I had a problem. It's like I'm not able to find Google Search Console data that I need. So what should I do? So I, I reverse learned all of that. And I still don't know a lot of Python. Um, I don't even understand the basic terminology and jargons, to be honest. But I think I do enough, I, I just learn enough so that I can do the things that I want to do. So 
we learn the basics of python code and what all things we need to understand i'll also try to explain the authentication authorization we'll connect to google search console api we will get to the access of theoretically unlimited data and then we will use uh, pandas uh, which in data frames to manipulate that data um, and we will learn all those things along the way uh, we just need to know a little bit probably one percent of what they they do uh, and then we'll use plotly to visualize uh, some of this data as we move forward uh, those things will come um, in in videos going forward but some of the examples that i want to share of what it can help us do uh, is let's say this chart so what this chart is showing is over the last let's say 16 months or so like what 12 months uh, what are the number of queries that is ranking in us or uh, by date so this data won't be available anywhere like if you even if you try to do that from data studio uh, it will still hit some limitations uh, you can just do this if you have access to the, the entire data that google search console offers uh, and it uses of course api python in google collab using plotly as a library Another good example is, let's say the way we looked at unique queries, here it, we are looking at unique number of pages that is ranking. Or, and ranking means that at least it has one impression. So let's say you are working on a large website uh, and you wanna see how many of them are actually impression active. It's like, at least we are getting one impression. Um, so I think this is a good chart. Like these are all leading indicators to your SEO strategy. Clicks will come, but you will start to see more of these uh, way before the clicks will start coming in. Uh, and I think this can be a really good metric to share internally and and, and observe and track. Um, this is again a very good chart. This is just the same thing. It is number of unique queries ranking, uh, but with a position as well. So if you want to analyze what has gone wrong, uh, then here is a good chart. Like You can visualize all of those things. Now, this is at a site level, but let's say if you just want to look at 500 URLs that you, that you have in your list, you can do that. If you want to have some condition which says like contains this, not contains this, includes this, doesn't include this. You can do all of that here at a query level, at a page level. Um, and so I think the possibilities are endless. Here is another example. So in this case, I took a, a page and I wanted to explore the possibility of increasing CTR. So what I did is I plotted top 10 positions and then uh, a CTR. And here we can see that there are some keywords, there are some queries. And the size of those uh, those circles are actually impressions. So what it is saying is that there are some queries which has low CTR and it is ranking between six and eight. And I think that's a good area to look at. It's like, can you do something to include those in titles or description? And that could potentially help us with CTR. Uh, and I think these are all interactive charts and you can do all of that. So we are gonna go into that and, and we'll, we'll see how we can do. Uh, I'll start sharing scripts going forward. Um, and we'll see how how it benefits you overall. What I need from you is uh, I need suggestions on what do you want me to do? Like what would you like to learn more? Uh, what do you need help with? And I'll try to uh, write scripts for that. And also, uh, it's my first time I'm, sh I'm like recording videos and going public and, and sharing something. So also give me like honest feedback of how can I do better, right? Because I wanna improve all of my skills. Uh, and I hope uh, this will help you overall in your, in your career journey. And uh, please share with me what you, you could have, uh, you, you will build going forward. So with this in mind, uh, let's get into the, the actual learning of uh, GSC API. Okay, so with that context, let's start getting into it. So what we are going to do today is we will use Google Collab. Um, you can go to collab.research.google.com and it will, it will open up something like this. Now, there's nothing but kind of a Jupyter notebook that helps you execute uh, the code and write the Python script, well, basically. So what we are going to do is we will use Google Collab to interact first with Google Cloud to get our credentials done. And once that authori authorization is complete, we will use Google Search Console API's various features to explore the data and uh, let's say sitemaps and inspection, URL inspection API and a bunch of other stuff. Now, if you go into Google Search Console API documentation um, right now, it it is kind of complex in a sense that it doesn't give me a clear understanding of how I should be using it. Um, the, 
now i think it makes sense that documentation is i think really good but initially it didn't really make sense to me because this documentation is more in sense of building uh, a flask app or let's say a node.js app um, and the code is there um, and it's fantastic uh, but initially it didn't help me so i thought that it would be really useful if i can simply explain what simple code you need to access the data that you wanna that you wanna access right so colab google cloud and google search console api access i'm gonna create a new notebook here that we will use throughout our code so you can just do new notebook and i'm gonna say google search console api through let's say via using python um, access using python okay now i have ready code with me but i'm gonna take you through line by line so i can explain otherwise i'm gonna skip a lot of different things to before we get go into that i wanted to give you a a, a brief understanding of what this is doing and I don't think I clearly understand it, but I think this is a good explanation so far I have gathered. Um, so what we are doing here is that this, your application is essentially your Google Colab. Don't confuse this with like iOS application or Android or anything like that. It's just a client and this is a server. We are trying to communicate to the server uh, to get authorization and consent um, and then get some sort of a credential and build a service. So you are going to have your Google account and in your Google account, you have your Google Search Console. What we will do first is we will ask for authorization and consent to Google Cloud. Um, Google Cloud has a project. So I'll take you to Google Cloud first um, and we will start building a project. So you can just literally go in Google Cloud. Um, you can click here. I have a project right now, but we will build a new one. So you can go to console. Um, you can sign up. It's free. Um, here are your different projects. So I'm gonna create a new project here um, and I will give uh, this project name. This project is gonna be GSC API from Colab, let's say. That's gonna be my project name. I created a project. Now, as soon as the project is ready, you can log into it. Uh, so now you are in this project. So here, the first step is complete, that now we have a project within our Google Cloud. Now we need to do three things. First, we need to uh, first we need to create auth screen, then we need to create credentials, uh, and before sorry, we do any of that, we need to enable an API. So I'm gonna go here, and from here you can go to something like API and services, and it says enabled API. So what this is doing is, in your Google Cloud, within your project, you are giving a short of access to different APIs. Now here you have all the different services that Google is gonna be having, uh, like BigQuery, uh, Google Drive, and bunch of other stuff. Uh, but I'm gonna just search for uh, Google Search Console, let's say. And here is my API, which is not enabled right now. So first, what we do is, when we enable this within this project, we are telling Google that if someone try to access this API using this project, then let them access it. So in this chart, the, the API is enabled now. Now what we need to do is we need to create OAuth consent screen. And this is basically nothing but, you know, when you try to log in, it says this is trying to access this type of information that that is what it is so i'm gonna say external um, because we don't have like an organization or anything like that so it will it will be surface like this i think this will resemble more um, and i'm gonna give you the name of an app um, and here i'm gonna say let's say collab app because we are accessing it from you can give any name um, here uh, it's gonna ask for developer id so this is my developer id um, I'm going to just use a random icon so it makes sense. Um, we can just correlate where this is going to be showing. Uh, and here I'm going to use the same Gmail, which is my developer information. So I do save and continue. Um, so this is building my consent screen. Uh, now here it is asking that what sort of a scope that I need. So I'll bring you back once again here. So within Google Cloud, we have a project. 
we are building a consent screen and here we are saying that what sort of a consent do we need right now because we have enabled a google search console api it's gonna show us the scope for google search console api as well and i'm gonna select both the scopes which is just view search console data for my verified sites or view and manage search console data so let's say if you just wanna get um so it, it is it is allowing us to do few things right um it is allowing us to get the the query level data or like traffic data um, it is allowing us to interact with our sitemap so let's say you can get a list of sitemap request information and also the submit sitemap um, so you can add remove list i think what i'm understanding is that if you have read and write information you can also add and remove some stuff so if you are planning to do this uh, let's say you want to add some sub um, folders programmatically let's say if you are technical seo work on a i don't know classified website where you want to add 5000 sub properties programmatically then you can just use this and do it right so we have granted consent uh, or scopes here as soon as the scope is done we move forward um, and we are going to use test users um, now this test user is this 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 um, project is not verified yet so it cannot be open to the public so you need um, an access with a test user so because i'm going to be accessing it i'm adding it as a test user let's say if i add your email id then you can still access this project um, and it would be fine so with this we are completing the the sort of a second stage of our project uh, which is we enable api and then we build a consent screen now as soon as the consent screen is done I can go to my uh, dashboard and then I can go to credential and this is a part where we are building our oath 2.0 credential and we will have client ID and client secrets so I can use this and here um, let's just use desktop app I don't really understand why we use this but I think it has worked I tried all the different uh, permutation and combination and this this in a sense identify which client you use to interact with this uh, and this client secrets is for that so i'm gonna say collab client here just so we can clearly understand right so now i have these two things uh, which i'm gonna save somewhere for now so let's say we go here and we start to build a few things so i'm gonna say client id is equal to this and i'm gonna say client secret is equal to my client secret i'm gonna hit play and it will save um, those things fantastic now all the setup related work is done and you just have to do it once um, once you have done this you have your client secret and client id you don't need to go into your um, google cloud project again and everything is gonna work smoothly this is one time setup you don't worry about it afterwards now now is the time we can get into our code so if you don't understand python that's fine but what we did really is we declared two variables uh, and we saved value into those variables right uh, so i'm going to say um, google cloud and you can comment this so that you can understand what this is doing so i'm going to say google cloud project um, credentials or secrets i'm going to say client id and client secrets now this is mine right now you can copy this code and you need to change for yourself now what you will do is you will use your google account to ask for authorization and consent and to do that you need some sort of a url and and i'll explain but to generate that url you need first to define scope is like what is your scope that you are asking uh, within this google search console project so I'm going to say commenting here and I'm going to say define oath scopes with read or write access. Um, if you just want to get read access, that's fine too. Um, and you can get that access. Now, where this is, this comes from is from our documentation. So you can use this and I'm going to say something like scope. Um, sorry scope nope scope nope okay 
So this is my uh, scope uh, and the scope I'm going to use right now. Let's say let's just do read only, right? Uh, let's say read only access. This is just a comment. It will help you understand what you have, uh, what you have done so far. Um, I'm also going to just comment out a scope, which is everything. So you can just remove this comment and this will allow you to access everything that you have. Now you need some sort of a redirect URI. So when, when you go to Google, um, it will go with these two things. Uh, one is your client secrets and ID and another is a scope that builds a URL and you say that I want to use this project that is identified by this client ID and client secret. And I want these many scopes. It will check within the Google project and it will see if it has really those access to those APIs. And if you, if it allows to have this consent, um, and then if everything is good, then it will return you an authorization code. Now to get that authorization code, uh, we need this in a browser. Um, if you have, let's say a web app, that authorization code will go to uh, some sort of a callback URL. So that will happen automatically. But in this case, we cannot do this in Colab so that we need an authorization code and to get authorization code in a browser, um, it will open up a new window for that. There is a specific value. Uh, it's called this. So I'm just going to copy paste it here. Um, and it will say redirect URI is equal to this. Um, so I'm, I can say redirect URI to open authorization code window in browser. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I will have to generate a URL that gives me the authorization code. And for that, um, I have a code, um, which I have been using forever, which is something like this. So it uses a kind of class or instance, which says OAuth to web server flow, and it takes client ID, client secret, OAuth sc scope, and redirect URI. So all four things that we denoted here, uh, defined here, it is going to use all of that. But the challenge is that right now, this Colab doesn't know what OAuth2 web server flow class is. And for that, we need to import required packages. And the required packages for this is something like this. Um, now, you can, if you want to better understand where this is coming from, you can just quickly search this and it will take you to a documentation, which is this. This is Oath2 client package. Um, this is not supported anymore, but this has been working really, really well. Um, in Google Colab, this comes native. You don't have to do anything extra, um, but if you don't have this, then you can install this dependency. And I can uh, write a code like this. It says install required Python packages. Um, and it use pip install auth2 client. Um, if you hit play, then right now it will say requirements already satisfied because it's already there. So it says user local lib Python 3.9 this packages um, and it has that package already. So you can just literally put this and it will work. Um, so we defined this four things. We have web auth server to flows. We are moving forward. Now it is throwing an error. It says auth scope not defined um, because I have a spelling error. It says this. Okay. Perfect. Now I have this, I have something in my flow. Um, so it now gives me all sorts of options, um, which, which does this thing. Now the next step obviously is generating authorization URL. So I'm going to say authorize URL is equal to um, flow dot I'm going to use step one get URL and done so what this does is it builds URL that generates authorization code uh, sorry authorization yeah uh, it builds a URL that help us generate authorization code so this is how it basically looks like I'm gonna keep both the things here um, is we created uh, in class or instance flow. I don't really understand what th that is, but anyway. Um, so now we have authorized URL. 
and it looks like this which is fantastic what i'm gonna do for sake of better visualization is i can say print authorization url and i will use print command to print this but what i can also do is i can say go to the following link in your browser and that's it so now it will generate this and it says go to the following link in your browser now if you click this now this is what you are seeing now i will spend a couple of minutes to explain so that we can close the loop it says choose your account to continue to collab app now what is a collab app the collab app is auth screen now if we move forward um, it will say this right now it says google hasn't verified this app um, but you have been given access to an app to be so that you can test so this is where that test email is coming from um, if you use this right now you won't be able to use it because um, you don't have an ex test access now once this is verified you won't see the screen you will directly move to this screen and it says google so collab app wants to access your google account when you allow this access it will ask for this so you are giving your consent and this consent is coming from this because you are just asking for read only but you can also ask for this and it will show two things it's like read and write or probably one thing just read and write um, and then you hit continue and here you have your authorization code now you take this authorization code and you move forward in your code um, and you can literally do this and say you received your auth code so your auth code is this you can just directly save it into your um, variable but what i generally like to do is I, I feel very good about it is i can say something like enter your authorization authorization code here and what it does is it gives you like some sort of a window and you put it here and now your authorization code is saved in this auth code variable we move forward and we say get credentials to build gsc service or gsc api service let's say now i would like to take you to a chart so what we have done so far is google our google account asked for authorization and consent the google search console api um, gave us the authorization code now you can also say that google project gave us authorization code and that's fine um, using this authorization code now it's time to generate these credentials now to generate this credential um, we come here and we use something within our app itself um, and we say credentials is equal to flow dot step two which is exchange um, and here we say auth code and once you do this um, you can print something like the credentials are generated successfully let's say and you will just like print that um, but what you can do next is you can build um, a service to access various features but to build a service which we are going to say something like webmaster service webmasters service is equal to build into bracket search console so okay here we need one more um, dependency and that dependency is uh, called build we don't have uh, something that allows us to use build and for that we use one more um, package and that package is called google api python client and this is what it is essentially uh, it is coming from our own documentation uh, like uh, google search console's documentation and we are going to use that uh, we don't have to install it because it's already installed but we have to import it and to import that we say from google api client dot um, discovery import build so now we will be able to use build so it, it says webmaster service is equal to build into bracket now it is explaining how to use build um, but we know very simply how to do it so i'm gonna say search console 
um, search console and then we say v1 and then we say http is equal to grids now what this http is asking here is um, how to use this credentials that we have built because we are going to be making actually http requests and to do that we need to create actually so right now if we do this it won't work because we don't have a way to use this http so i'm going to say this is actually building a service to access various uh, to access various features of gsc api but before we do that we need a couple of more things so we are going to say http is equal to http lib to dot http again to use this um, you will likely need a package and from that package you can simply say import http lib2 now this is again a part of google collab so you don't have to necessarily do that but here we are using so we are creating http object um, and authorize it with our url and once we have that object we can say creds is equal to credential dot authorize dot http now what this is doing now is it has generated credential which is access token and all of that you can literally go and access it here so you can say credentials dot now you can have access token so it's going to show you the access token um, then you can say let's say app dot maybe refresh token or client secret or um, access you have you can also revoke revoke access and all sorts of things so um, i'm not going to go into that right now but what this is doing is it has got all the things um, and we are using this credentials to further build a service so now we have something called creds um, and using this creds we are we are, we are gonna build um sorry let's see HTTP. okay um main module is not callable So now we got our code ready and our webmasters service is now ready. Um, so this is a Google API client discovery resource and now you can start doing a bunch of things with it. So your code is now completely ready. You don't have to do any other things. You can just keep using this code to connect to Google Search Console. Um, once again, just to recap, what we did is we created a project, we created a credential, we created uh, our screen, we enabled API, and after that, we asked for authorization and consent, and in return, it generated uh, a credential, and we used this credential to build a service. Now, once the service is ready, we can start using all these different features, which is uh, explained here, uh, which is search analytics, sitemap, sites, URL inspection, testing tool, uh, batch request, and lots of different things. So I'm going to close all of this now and we will go back to our code. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to figure out how to get a list of sites we have in GSC account. Okay. Okay. So I think it would be great if we can follow, um, as, as you start doing things, it would be great if you can follow these documentation. So the first thing that we are going to use is site. Um, we are going to get a list of site from our Google Search Console account. And to do that, it uses something like list as a, as a feature or in, in code. So using site, um, it will list the user search console. So you can just literally go and say, webmaster service which you are going to use throughout the website and you are going to say site um, and then you can say list and then you can say execute and now it is basically giving you a list of all the websites that you have now in my current google search console account i just have two sites uh, which i'm gonna use um, i will likely add one more site uh, which is my client site uh, i'm asking for their permission at the moment uh, but it has a lot of data, so we can expand um, into 
bunch of data going forward but right now we'll just use this so you have this and for uh, for this to be saved we need to save it into a variable so i'm going to say get a list of site in my google account google search console account let's say search console account and then we can say something like print site list okay so now this is printing it it's worth noting that what it is showing us is a type of a dictionary um, and you can access this dictionary uh, with something like this so you can say site site entry so now you have two site entry uh, within that you can say zero um, and it will give you the first one uh, it has two things one is site url and another is a permission level uh, you can do few things here you can say for each in this print each and what it is doing is it is taking it is taking um, each of those items or elements i don't know how to exactly call it uh, but it is taking each of those elements and it is printing it you can also say something like print each and site url um, and what it is going to do is it is just going to print a list of site sorry um, and that's it so imagine you got a list of site and you can now programmatically access it through code that all the websites that you have but i'm gonna just stop here and i will just let you explore this further so this is the first thing that we have done is how to get a list of sites we have in google search console now we are going to move forward and the next thing that we are going to do is how to access sitemaps within your gsc property okay now to access a sitemap first you have to say what website you want to access the sitemap for and in this case i have a submitted one sitemap for one of my friend's website um, and here is a sitemap okay uh, sitemap.xml um, it might have a bunch of urls it's a sitemap index so i'm going to use this url and i will say i want to use this website uh, to get sitemap for so i can say something like what is the website i want the site map for okay now to get the sitemap data i'm going to say get sitemap data so let's instead of me copy pasting it directly so okay let's do let's get sitemap data okay um to get sitemap data we will use webmasters webmaster service once again so i'm going to say webmasters dot sitemap dot list and in list i'm going to say site url is equal to website and then i will say execute and as soon as i do that i have a sitemap to access so i'm going to say sitemap data is equal to this so i have now this data into my variable uh, sitemap data uh, now I can see when it was last submitted. I can see whether it's is the index or not, um, and bunch of other things that I can access. Um, it says submitted twenty, uh, twenty six, uh, one ninety six, one ninety four images, and stuff like that. Now you can, if you just want URL, once again you can just do sitemap, and it will post this. Then you access your first element, and then you can say path. Uh, and this gives you the URL of a sitemap. And you can now do other things that you want to do with it. Um, so I'm going to copy paste this code here. Um, I can also do something like I have another website, let's say moneymondigital.com. Um, I can say da 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 da. Okay. So I'm going to copy paste this URL. I'm going to copy paste. I'm going to okay. perfect. So now I get the order, but I'm going to revert back to the website. Okay. So we did two things here. We accessed sitemap. We accessed the list of sites, 
the next thing we are going to do is how to use URL inspection using GSE API. Okay. Now, to do URL inspection, you need first of all which URL you want to inspect, right? Um, and you can do it programmatically as well. You can let's say now start using uh, the the sitemap and using sitemap, you can say get all the URLs from the sitemap and do the URL inspection. Uh, we will go into that later on, but this is this to give you a basic understanding of how to use different things uh, using Google Search Console. Now, uh, this is our uh, URL to inspect. To inspect this URL, we need to make um, once again like one API call, and this API call um, will be uh, we will send a request and it will give us a response. Uh, until now, you know, all the things has been just a list. We, we weren't sending them much. Uh, but in this case, we will have to send two things. One is what is the website that we want to get inspect, we want to inspect it for, and then what is the inspection URL. And for that, we need to send a request. And we need to build a request body. Uh, this is what we call request body. Um, and for to build a request body, we first say inspection URL. Um, URL and once again you know you can just go here and take a take a look at it you can say URL inspection um, we will say ins index inspect and here is uh, the parameters that it needs so it says that it needs to have inspect and then body or request body is equal to be this so um, we will build a requ uh, request body first we'll say um, inspection URL is actually URL to inspect and uh, a site URL um, is the website because we have already defined this uh, variable here. So let's go here and it will give you this. So it says inspection URL um, and then a site URL. So it is already helping us to build a body. You can um, come here and understand what all those uh, specifics are, but it's pretty simple anyway. So this is our request body. And then we'll go once again here and we'll see if that is the request body, um, then what is the response? And response is this, and this is here like a fully explained response. Um, and I'm gonna say, I will receive the response, but I wanna save the response in a variable, uh, and I will start using the same webmaster service dot, um, I will use URL inspection, um, then, okay. So one thing to observe here to better understand is we used URL inspection so far, right? Um, so URL inspection and in URL inspection we have one more use or feature uh, so you can come here and do index and then you can if you go in index as well uh, it has something called inspect so then you can do inspect um, and then in inspect uh, you already know what to give as a body so it says body um, we are going to come here and says body is equal to a request body which we have already made. So it is doing this exact thing and saving it on, in, a, in a response. And now the response is ready. Uh, we come here and just paste it. Um, now to access the, the response, um, I can do something like print. Oh, no, no, no. To do response, I say response. Okay, I think I got it. So, I think in last, what we did is we used Money Monk probably, um, and that is why. Yeah, okay, we got the problem. So we didn't actually execute it. So we're gonna say execute. So as soon as it does that, it is asking for the response from Google. It says, my website is this, and my URL to inspect is this, and here is your response. Now it's saying that the, the URL, uh, so here is the result link, verdict is passed, submitted and indexed, last time crawled, Google canonical, user canonical, uh, referring URL, and everything looks perfect, right? 
So now we have seen how to use inspection API. Now you can build a list um, here and then you can just loop through it and it will give you the status of all the different types of API, uh, API response. Now um, we are going to move to the most important part of Google Search Console API, which is uh, getting search analytics data, right? So I'm gonna say how to get Google Search Console analytics data using API, okay? Perfect. This is gonna be the most interesting part. So I will just, for the, the, for the sake of simplicity, um, I will say, the website we want to get the data for um, and I will say this website um, and then obviously we will have to um, build a request body and then we will have to get the response using request body and I will work reverse so I'm going to say response data is equal to web masters service dot search analytics obviously dot now let's go back so that we can clearly understand uh, we are using search analytics right and in search analytics we have close uh, we have something to close the connection and another thing that we have is uh, using query and in query it is saying that you give them a site url in the request body um, and that's it. And the way you build a request body is using aggregation type, data state, dimension filter groups, dimensions, end date, raw limit, search type, and all those things. Um, you can also understand all of those things in detail over here. Um, so you can go to query and all the different dimensions are explained here. You can also use this API Explorer to see what sort of a um, body parameters that we will have to give it to them, right? Uh, so let's let's start building body uh, one by one and it will make sense going forward. But right now I'm just gonna complete this and I'm gonna say query uh, and then my site URL, which uh, my function is asking here and that URL is actually my website, right? Um, and then I say body is equal to the request body that I'm gonna build. So I am completing this and then I say execute. But we are not gonna run function now because we are building our request body. So I'm gonna say request body is equal to this. So now we will start building it. So first thing that we need is start date, okay? So we're gonna say start date is equal to, um, now important thing here is you can come and you will have to read through all of this and say, start date of requested date range, this is the time zone, and this is the date uh, format that we are gonna follow. Um, and for that, let's say, we will say 2023, uh, January, day first, okay? Then um, it says end date, uh, and we will write something like end date is equal to, um, I will just probably copy paste this, and I can say 28th February, and this. I'll have to have a comma here. Um, after that, um, it is asking for something like dimension. So let's do dimension. I'll say dimensions. So I'll also have to do this. Dimensions. And dimension needs to go like this uh, in in. I don't know what that is called really. Okay, so dimension I'm gonna ask is date and let's just ask date for now, okay? Uh, let's see what comes up. Um, and we can change it going forward. So that's my dimension. Um, by the way, this is optional. You can also not ask it and it will still give you the result. Um, search type is already deprecated, but type is a is a thing that you can use. Um, it's also optional, so I'm not gonna use it right now because I don't wanna complicate it. Probably I will prepare one more video um, which says, uh, which explains all of that. Uh, aggregation type is, is pretty cool, um, but I'm not gonna use it right now as well. Uh, and then I will use raw limit uh, because by default, the raw limit is thousand, 
but I'm going to use this 25,000 because you cannot go above 25,000. Um, and then this, this is also pretty cool. It says data state. Uh, what data state is, is, um, you know, in Google search console, we have uh, something like most recent date. And this most recent date is probably sometimes half day data. Uh, so it is saying that if you need that fresh data, then use all. Otherwise, um, if you don't include it, then it will just include the final data. So I gen always do final. Um, so this is my going to be my data state. So this is the body that I built um, and I think it is complete. So let's go and request this data. Uh, okay. So sorry, I made a mistake. Let's go. Okay. So response data is going to be having all the things that I have. Okay. Let's loop through it to better understand. So for each in response data print each and it's going to say two things rows and whatever um, so I will access rows now uh, because it has all the things so when I access rows uh, it gives me the date because I asked for the date as a dimension and then date clicks impression CTR and position now let's get a little bit fancier um, before we do this I am going to give you uh, something like this so I will say give me a length of the response rows and it will show me how many rows of data it fetched for uh, by this time i'm going to ask for two dimension now and i will say i want date and query and it is getting this data so now you will observe that as soon as i asked for query uh, it got up to twenty five thousand because it is getting date wise data for each of those query and obviously that's too much of data right um, what we can also do is let's say for those two months worth of period if you just want to get query then you can literally come here remove the date it will get the query level data which is it got impression or clicks on 3380 query then you will start to see the query clicks and impression and all of that so i'm going to keep date for now um, i will add one more dimension and that dimension is going to be page. So page is actually a landing page. Um, and here, um, it is getting, obviously it's going to be um, a lot of data. So it's going to get a bunch of different things here uh, and you have like 25,000 uh, rows of data. So that's, uh, that's cool. Now, this is the, the limitation here is it is just getting 25,000 rows of data to get more data. You will have to iterate on it. And to do that, probably I will create a new video uh, because I think it's already getting too long uh, in this. But this is, I think, a good way for you to understand how to use query, uh, how to use uh, Google Search Console API to get a bunch of different things. Um, what I generally do is I can ask for even more dimension um, and those dimensions uh, which we haven't asked for is country, device and search appearance. You can use permutation and combination of uh, other things too. Let's say you can just use query and page uh, and country or device um, and it will give you all those data. But I think I'm going to stop um, here today. Uh, I think it was a good overview of how to use all four different things. Um, and the next uh, video that I'm going to make is how to access, let's say even 16 months worth of data with whatever parameters that you like, um, even if that's more than 25,000. So we will loop through this request. Uh, we will use um, new, we will use a, uh, another parameter, it says start row, um, and it will give us, it will instruct them that you already given us 25,000 rows of data, and now you need to give uh, from, let's say 25,001 to 40, 9,999 or 50,000, right? So um, I think this will allow you to play around and do multiple things that you want to do with Google Search Console. Um, what I would like is using this, I'm sure you will start to have a lot of ideas in your mind. Um, so please don't hesitate to send those things to me. Um, I want to prepare some sort of a backlog of things that I will create videos on, uh, which is Google Search Console, Python, SEO, and content, and technical SEO, and things like that. So um, hit me up. Uh, I already have uh, a good understanding of what all things that I 
uh, need to do. Uh, the next video will be on getting uh, more than 25,000 rows and probably we will start getting into some of the visualization techniques uh, that we have. So I hope you enjoyed this video um, and you will be able to do those four things uh, with the Google Search Console API. If you think that this video has been helpful, then please write it in comments. Um, if you think that it could be helpful for your colleagues or your manager, uh, please send this to them as well. Um, and as I said, I'm looking forward to your feedback. Uh, I, I will start publishing some sort of a backlog of what's coming next uh, on, my, on my blog or website, mihimag.com. Um, and thank you so much.